Some folks have a loose definition of winning. Here's how we look at it. Winning is fulfilling a genuine commitment to a goal. That means investing the time, learning from your mistakes, demanding more of yourself and those on your team, even when it's uncomfortable. It's caring about your work so much that the world won't ever see it until it meets your standards. Winning is giving everything you have to people who depend on you, people who look to you for leadership and inspiration, it's raising the bar, setting the example, day after day after day. And winners never quit, regardless of the obstacles. So no, not everyone is a winner, not by any definition. To all the winners tonight, whether you walk out with an Addy or not, congratulations and well done. A designer named Carl sat at his desk, creatively stumped on his current project. How do you market something so boring and plain? A number two pencil is incredibly lame. When an email came in from the local ad club, Carl dismissed it and played it off with a shrug with no good ideas for his shoot that day. He packed up his bags and he went on his way. As he drove to the shoot, he looked all around, admiring the artwork that he saw in his town. Murals and paintings and sculptures abound. Carl was inspired to buckle down. When he got to the shoot, he struggled with doubts. How can I make this pencil stand out? It's boring and yellow and plain as can be. When in his frustration, he thought creatively. His doubts went away as his attitude changed. He was so excited about the breakthrough he'd made. A sketch is the first step of anything great, and that is the message I need to convey. After the shoot, he was filled with rejoice when he turned up the radio and heard such a voice. Enter your work to the Addies today, because it all ends at midnight, so please don't delay. Carl worked hard and began to obsess, executing the vision that he had in his head. The photo, the color, the design, and the sets. It all came together. It starts with a sketch. Carl was proud of what he had made, so he opened the email from early that day. He thought for a minute and he knew it was right, so he clicked on submit and he called it a night. The big day came and Carl sat in the crowd, repeatedly wowed by his talented town. The speaker walked up and began to present. The ad he goes to Carl for it starts with a sketch. He thought about something as he walked to the stage. He took something mundane and he made something great. Carl felt so proud and so full of purpose because his work was special, creative, and worth it. Hello, and welcome to the 2022 American Advertising Awards for Toledo. Tonight, we recognize some of the best work in the industry. Our competitors have worked hard, have created their masterpieces, and have truly shown their worth. These are the creative artists that the American Advertising Awards strive to recognize. And now, I have the pleasure of presenting the First Judge's Choice Award. The First Judge's Choice and Gold Addy Award goes to Madhouse for the video Brave, created for Brave. Hey guys, my name is Brenda Cortez. I am a producer here in Chicago, Illinois working at an independent agency that goes by the name The Distillery Project. I've been producing at The Distillery for about three, a little over three years, um, but I was presented an opportunity last year to become a judge on this panel. And I, um, it's my first time, so thank you. What an honor to review the work. Um, and so I'm basically on here to call out uh, what was my um, best, in uh, best in show for judges choice 
and I have to say that the um, the one that stood out to me and was my number one pick was for the organization Brave. Uh, I think um, looking at it in the lens of film, uh, film video and sound, um, I think I want to just say it was definitely something that um, really stood out to me. Its message, obviously, for me, like the the mission of Brave and providing resources and what it's done in the short amount it um, it became to be. I think during the time tough times um, for this nation, for this world. It's something I feel like truly rocked the, the world um, on a topic that is very important and needs to be discussed more. As a person of color myself, I think it's truly important and um, we might get lost in not having as many discussions as we should be about certain topics and um, how people that don't have opportunities and how um, some opportunities are just not there for for many people so i i truly think that this piece of work was um outstanding and um the music the editorial treatment the the specific footage that was selected um going back to the music perfectly like went hand in hand with the footage um even the people the ta i don't want to call them talent but real people that that, that um raised their their hands and were a part of it and were um, giving themselves to be filmed on screen. I think it was just all so beautifully put together and um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity and so happy that I came across the organization Brave, something new for me that I've learned on um, on what this organization is and, and all the best to everyone that has a hand in that. And I can't wait to um, learn more and see more that comes out of the Brave organization. So thank you again for the opportunity. On May 25th, 2020, America watched George Floyd get murdered, captured by a cell phone as he called out for help, and officers knee on the neck of a black man. Taxpayer dollars doing evil work. And it was like a bomb went off. Every town in our country went off. Around the world, people protest. How did this happen again? There was anger, outrage, and deep pain. The world demanded change, but what comes next? Brave is what's next. Black rights activism, visibility, and equity, formed in the days following George Floyd's death, formed out of the passion of his stolen breath. And in our first two months, Brave organized a peaceful protest. Brave organized the first Juneteenth celebration. Brave Lobby City Council to get an ordinance passed that sets in motion the discussion about how black people experience our city. And Brave helped stop the controversial police training because in the wake of police brutality, we do not need more training on force. Brave has done more in two months than some organizations do in a year. You probably wonder what we plan to do next. Brave will help tell our stories in our schools because black history is American history. Brave will be a voice in city government advocating for policies that help support black people in our community. Brave will create opportunities for black businesses and help to provide funding and resources so that more people can thrive. And we will make space for black culture to be celebrated because black people don't just protest, we also sing and dance upon injustice. Our community will be better when there isn't fear out after sundown. Our experiences will be richer when they are more diverse. And our children must know what equity looks like. Brave is the organization that will lead our community towards real change. In our city council meetings, our business roundtables, and our churches, these conversations will be uncomfortable. But we aren't afraid, and we won't walk away. It's built right into our name. It's an honor to be presenting a gold addy to Jacob Parr for the Trippin' Biscuits logo design. Let's take a look. This year, the Silver Addy winners have been split into three groups. Here's the first group. A Silver Addy is awarded to Heart for the Imagination Station social campaign created for Imagination Station. 
A Silver Addy Award also goes to Heart for the ProMedica Stories campaign created for ProMedica. That has built up a lot of mistrust in the African American community. And that mistrust is decreased willingness to see a doctor, decreased willingness to go into a, a, any medical setting. And that's something that we have to, we have to break down. The Bronze Addy winners have been split into two groups this year. This is group one. A Bronze Addy is awarded to Amy Karlovac for the Black Swamp Arts Festival poster. The world is made up of people. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Your Media People for an ode to contrast created for my brief. Our differences is what makes the world beautiful. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Madhouse for the GM ASAP website created for GM ASAP. A Bronze Addy is awarded to Hanson for the National Hardware website created for National Hardware. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Interrupt for the Genesis website created for Genesis products. Heart is awarded a Bronze Addy for the Heart for the Holidays campaign, created for Heart. This website really struck a chord with the judges. A Gold Addy is awarded to Chris Hatfield for the copywriting on the Reverend Guitars website. A Silver Addy Award goes to Interrupt for Fearless Gin, created for Interrupt. Ever since I visited OHLQ.com, I'm feeling a lot smarter. A Silver Addy is awarded to Heart for the OHLQ Making Spirits Bright campaign, created for Ohio Liquor Jobs Ohio Beverage System. This one goes out to the makers. The culinary craftsman. A silver Addy Award goes to Madhouse for For Makers, My Makers, created for Libby. So let's raise a glass to the makers of drinks, the makers of meals, the makers of memories. A silver Addy is awarded to Interrupt for Fearless Rum, created for Interrupt. A silver Addy is awarded to Creadio for Zip Code Matters. Your zip code, where you live, can have a profound effect on many uh, life determinants, jobs, education, health, and so forth. It's time to present another Gold Addy Award. Madhouse has awarded a Gold Addy for the video Purdue for Life, created for Purdue Research Foundation. <laughs> The Silver Medal Award is AAF Toledo's highest honor, presented each year since 1959 to recognize those who've made outstanding contributions to advertising through creative excellence and social causes. 
and by advancing the industry standards. It's also nice if silver medal award winners are not Canadian. It's crucial that nominees are not in prison or serving time on a work farm or road crew, especially if they were convicted of robbing a convenience store in which any form of advertising was present. Anyone who's highly radioactive will not be considered for this prestigious honor. And winners should not be wet or even slightly damp, since that condition promotes the growth of mold, which can irritate the silver medal. On two occasions, the Silver Medal Award was revoked after it was learned that the winner was half human, half horse. Based on the judge's personal preferences, nominees can be disqualified for the absence or the overabundance of neck tattoos. And I'd be lying if I said that hairstyle has nothing to do with winning this award. Though not required, trampoline skills are a nice touch, and anyone in serious contention for the silver medal is encouraged to give themselves an edge by injecting human growth hormones. This year's recipient will be expected to fulfill the usual duties of a silver medal award winner, appearing in fruit-themed parades, posing for statues, sitting in dunk tanks at local festivals, Without further ado, the winner of the 2022 Silver Medal Award is the Marketing Director for Bionics Development, Kim McBroom. I would say Kim is ethical. Kim's compassionate. She's thoughtful. I would say classy. I would say kind. Stylish smart, genuine, gracious, kind. She is professional, creative, uh, she's a leader, and tough. Kim McBroom has had an enormous impact on me and my career. I, I am so grateful for her noticing what my talent was and what my skills are and being just like a big sister to me. I really look up to Kim. When I started working with her 20 years ago, I was an account coordinator, just trying to take everything in and learn, and she was someone that I really looked up to. Over the past 20 years, she's been a mentor to me, a great friend, a role model. If only I had Kim's style, I would be all set. Just, she was so strong, and her leadership skills were amazing, and I saw how she took a complex problem and she just started to break it down. I feel like Kim was one of the first female leader mentors that I had when I came to Toledo. She is an amazing mentor. She teaches you things without you even realizing that you're learning them. She's got this strength uh, that she delivers with a lot of very uh, sophistication and kind of beauty about her. She's very uh, warm and engaging. And uh, that's a, that makes you makes you really feel like this is going to be fun. It's it's going to be serious, but we're, and we're going to make something happen here that could be really great. I think Kim's people skills are off the charts. Kim uh, can connect with anyone. When you're in a meeting with Kim, she is engaging. She wants to laugh and have fun and. And yet, at the end of the day, she has always been a part of organizations that were doing fantastic work. She has a vision, and then she just makes it happen. And she makes it happen in such a way that you don't really realize that she, you're following her vision until it's already done. You know, she never raises her voice. She always it has this way of kind of bringing everybody around to understanding the bigger picture. It's a gift the way she does it. I would love to sit in meetings and watch her do this. You know, she could take a room where there were all these different ideas and opinions and directions, and she had this ability to kind of steer it in the way that it needed to go. And she did it in a manner that made you feel good about where you worked about the people you surrounded yourself with. And that energy is contagious, you know? There's nothing worse than being around negative people. So maybe in a nutshell, Kim's greatest attribute is she's so gall darn nice and she's very positive. And that positive energy came through every single day. No matter how tough things are, um, uh, 
Kim never changes. Um, if there's something going on on the inside that rattles Kim, on the outside, um, she always seems to be the same. She smiles, um, she's genuine, and she looks you in the eyes, and she always deals with everybody um, exactly the same, no matter the problem being good or bad. And I've always appreciated that about Kim. You know, she's one of the people that just brings, uh, you know, kind of a smile to your face whenever you walk in and talk to her. I think it's just her personality coming through and everything she does. Kim has given us opportunities. I mean, I think about the stuff that, that uh, Madhouse got to do with Kim when she was at the Walleye uh, and the Mud Hens, taking risks and making making work that that we wanted to make and that she was excited to make with us. And, and so in many ways, the stuff that we did for her was, was work that, um, that we're really proud of to this day. When I think back on the very first Race for the Cure and Kim's vision of what that could be, the fact that she brought that here through Flower Hospital, and we have gone from 600 women in the very first Race for the Cure to upwards of 20,000 people participating each year, millions of dollars raised, and countless lives saved. And that impact is what I think of when I think of Kim. I always think that she's looking for people to be their most creative. She allows you to experiment and and really push the, the boundaries, but she knows what she wants. When she needed something that was really difficult, she had such a sweet way of asking for it. And she would come in and she'd say, would it be hard? And this became a joke in the office for many years and Kim has moved on in her career, but still, you know, all these years later, when we need something done at BGSU that's difficult, we always say, would it be hard? And everyone laughs and has such fond memories of Kim saying that to us. And, and it was never, would it be hard to create a postcard? It was usually, you know, would it be hard to maybe design the BGSU magazine by the end of day tomorrow? And I also need it printed as well and, and actually delivered and, no one would bat an eye. Anyone else could ask for that, and of course the answer would be no, but when Kim asked for it, she always got it. And it's so funny because she has this really sweet voice, and she always has a smile on her face, but the woman gets stuff done. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> I mean, she just loves life, and I think that that, it comes into play in, in all of the areas that she works in. First of all, thank you so very much Toledo Ad Club for this amazing award. I am so surprised and so touched and almost without words, but I suppose I'm not without words. So thank you a million times. I am very honored to receive this award. And also Chrissy Redrup and Joe Menick, two colleagues, co-workers, professionals and dear friends, thank you so very much for thinking of me for this and for nominating me. And also for the lovely people, every wonderful person who took the time out of their schedule to find nice things to say about me. You never know how people feel and I am touched beyond words. This has just been one of the nicest moments, I think, of my entire career. I have always loved receiving awards for the work that we do and the work that we're able to complete. And it's such a nice thing when everybody comes together, the internal group and your external group and your agency, and you work on a process and you make something work and it's beautiful and also effective. I just think that's such a rush to have that happen and to have things work out like that. And it's, it's so amazing that these people who have, I've had the honor of working with all these years have felt the same way too. It makes me incredibly happy. I'm going to quote Joe Menick because he taught me this along the way that, oh, Kimmy, you know, when you get your, you get your ad plan and you get your media and you get your marketing and your creative and you, you're ready to launch, that's when you really have to be careful. And I would say, Joe, what do you mean? Why would I have to be careful? And he'd be like, well, Kimmy, 
this shit works. And so it has been one of the jokes my entire career and I've taken it places and TSW has been a huge standout. I feel so fortunate that I've had people who are the most creative, the most thoughtful, people who do good things and thoughtful things and creative things even when no one is looking, that we work together and we come together and we have a great time doing it, but we have to be effective and we know that and yet we have a great time doing it and we become friends along the way. Throughout my career, working with special people and having special moments together has just really made my whole, it's made my life. My job has been so important to me. My husband, my, my dear Sherwood, has been a graphic designer and artist in the industry for the longest time and I have to thank him because he has helped me along the way. He gives advice, he gives support. He gives love and he's just made this easy for me. He's really helped me understand the creative process, how you work with people to let that idea come through and you can't get in the way of ideas. The client getting out of the way is a really big piece of being successful, I think. My kids have given me great material my whole life. I, I've picked up pieces of them. I hear what they say. It, they help keep me timely. They help me understand um, what's important to people. They help me see reality and what's current, and I'm so grateful to all of them for that. Everybody brings something different to the table, so this is like, it takes a whole community. I feel like my strength is not in my ability to do the work necessarily, but to recognize the strengths in people and to understand what they can bring to a project, what they can bring to an initiative, and how they make things work, and how we put the pieces together and get the best video, the best creative, the best strategy, the best media plan, the best all-around outcomes. That's what it's all about. You walk away smarter, you walk away with good work, and you walk away with great friends and colleagues. And for that, I'm very grateful. Kimmy, you are a gem. This is a big award, a great award. I join lots of others in applauding you. Kim, you're perfect. You're awesome. You deserve it, and I'm very proud of you. She, she's done so much for our community. So thankful to call you a friend. Being a friend of Kim, that's been the most beneficial to me. Congratulations, Kim. I mean, you've deserved this for a long time. You're so incredibly smart and creative, and I couldn't be happier for you and I know that my life is so much richer because you've been in it. I am so proud of you. It's an absolute pleasure to present a Judge's Choice Award to Creadio for the webisode Zip Code Matters, created for Creadio. What's up, y'all? My name is Marshall Shorts, and I am creative in chief of Artfluential, a boutique branding and design studio based here in Columbus, Ohio. It was a difficult choice, but my choice for a judge's choice in the AAF Toledo Awards was Zip Code Matters. I chose Zip Code Matters because I thought this project was timely and the subject matter should be illuminated. As a designer, I understand the power of design and I subscribe to the notion that anything that is not designed by nature or God is designed by us, people, human beings. And so that allows us and affords us the opportunity uh, to create more equitable spaces, places, and things. This design also includes where we live, our communities, and the ways in which we live and design our communities. This means that we all make decisions that impact other people. Neighborhoods and communities are a great example of how environments are also 
by design. I thought Zip Code Matters offered an outlook and perspective on how social determinants can be impacted just based on where you live and your zip code and how that is also by design. So in closing, I'd like to thank AAF Toledo for allowing me to be a judge and to work alongside some really dope and talented creatives. And I hope to play a part uh, and participate in the future and be able to support this program in Toledo again. Thank you and uh, congratulations to all of the winners. Everybody uh, that submitted uh, put a lot of work into what they did. And I'm just grateful to have an audience uh, to view this work and be a part of this uh, epic event in such uh, crazy times as COVID. So look forward to the event and uh, I'll talk to you all later. Peace. Children who live in neighborhoods like that, and that particularly African-American children living in low-income neighborhoods, have asthma at four times the rate of middle-class children. Four times the rate. They have asthma because of all those conditions I just mentioned, pollution, diesel trucks, dilapidated buildings, and so forth. And if a child has asthma, that child is more likely than other children to come to school drowsy the next day because they've been up at night wheezing. We know that African Americans have shorter life expectancies, greater rates of cardiovascular disease because they live in less well-resourced neighborhoods, the absence of grocery stores that sell fresh food, the absence of medical facilities, primary care physicians who don't practice in those neighborhoods. That contributes to it as well. And in one key zip code, 10452, here are some stats. 34% of the population smokes. Over 50% are obese. 42% suffer with high blood pressure. Kids in elementary school through middle school are at a 35% attainment level. The high school graduation rate is below 60%. Within a mile and a half stretch that covers one, two, three, four train subway stops, there are three McDonald's, a Burger King, a Wendy's, a Domino's, and a Little Caesars. People have pointed out the fact that we are segregated and have tried to do several things to correct that. But what's happened? Most recently, a year and a half ago, in a zip code that governs the Upper West Side of Manhattan, this is where people who probably make upwards of 150 to millions of dollars a year were being asked to accept into their super high functioning schools 25% of the kids of a neighboring zip code. So this is now above 96th Street. So now you're talking about West Harlem and where kids are not as affluent and we're not doing as well on standardized, uh, standardized tests to accept some of these kids into their prime middle school as a way for a better integration, which is proven to help. And there was a major uproar amongst the residents of the Upper West Side. A Bronze Addy Award goes to the Toledo Mud Hands for The Joy in Hensville is Back, created for the Toledo Mud Hands. So last year was hard. A curveball nobody saw coming. Was something terrifying and heartbreaking seemingly every day coming out of left field. A Bronze Addy is awarded to Madhouse for the CUA Light the Way campaign video created for the Catholic University of America. I'm gonna let it shine. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Nick Amarine, photographer director for Ice Jordan created for Greg Walker. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Mad Ave Group for the Anthony Wayne United logo design, created for Anthony Wayne United.
A bronze Addy is awarded to Matt Av Group for the Sylvania School District rebrand created for Sylvania schools. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Madhouse for the Petty Thank You video created for the Petty School. A Gold Addy Award is awarded to Jacob Parr, Chris Hatfield, and Electric Fund for the Reverend Guitars website. The Mosaic Initiative is designed to champion for diversity in education, opportunities, and recognition in the industry of art, advertising, and media. This award recognizes those who are purposely making sure that all are included and brought to the table that should be there. We are so honored to recognize these winners of our Mosaic Awards this year. In the categories of Mosaic Educator, which recognizes any sort of teaching effort that relates to diversity and teaching our students about art, advertising, and media. Our Mosaic Champion Award, which is a general supporter of diversity in our industry our Mosaic Multicultural Talent and Advertising Award, which purposely uses diversity behind the scenes and in front of the camera in their projects, and our Mosaic Alternative Media Form, which is non-traditional media such as art or music, sound, as it relates to diversity, celebrating different cultures and bringing different groups together. We are here with our Mosaic Educator winner, Tisha Mays. Welcome, you. Tisha. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, Thank we are so you. excited Thank to present you. you with this award. Can I, can I please have it? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, thank oh, you. It's wonderful to have you as one of our winners. So oh, please pleasure. tell us about Amazing Kids. <laughs> I've been working on Amazing Kids for some time, the summer of 2021. Okay. I received a grant from the city of Toledo. They had their youth programming grant through CARES Act funds. Okay. Amazing Kids, it is a reading literacy program and we teach broadcasting fundamentals. So television, podcasting, blogging, the kids learn sound engineering and it's for kids in grades four through eight. Amazing. And with that program, what are you seeing coming out of the kids when they participate? The kids were so excited when they came in there and they seen all of the podcasting equipment. They saw the teleprompter and the green screen and the and the MIDI boards, the keyboards, the DJ equipment. And we're like, we got something here. And you hear what they talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, hear what they talk about, hear how they express themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just need an outlet. Mm -hmm. And it might surprise you what they come up with. Oh, something absolutely. that you didn't even think about. Oh, they're gonna be taking my job <laughs> very soon. That's what we need to be preparing them to do. <laughs> they're gonna be taking is to my know job. how to take over That's when, we're, right. when we're gone. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Totally deserved. We're Thank so you. happy that you Thank were able you. to nominate and win. And that's encouragement and empowerment for all those who are doing something similar. You are truly an inspiration. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we are sitting here with Rob Seifert from Madhouse, our Mosaic Champion winner in collaboration with others. And I am so proud to welcome him today. Thank you so much for being with us, Rob. And congratulations, I want to hand you oh, your you. Mosaic Award. Award. Thanks. And could you tell awesome. us a little bit about the project? So Sons of Toledo was a project that um, I think Matt Foss was the person who uh, sort of came up with the uh, idea of, of making a short film about the Barber community in Toledo. And Matt uh, approached us about helping with the project. And I was excited about the idea of being a part of it. It just sounded um, fun. I think having Monty be the director of this, even seeing the way that he approached a sensitive subject. Like when he would sit with, with the main actors explaining, you know, this is, this is what the scene is about, this is what I want you to, to be conveying to the audience. I mean, it was just a clear example of the spot where you need to have somebody who, who is going to be relatable in that kind of way. And I mean, that was really important for making it happen. If anything, I feel like this has been such a rewarding experience for me be, to be a part of in like a way that has quite honestly benefited any effort that we might have to like change our corporate culture at Manhouse. Like, mm -hmm. 
Well, congratulations. This was a wonderful submission. We're so happy to be able to recognize and bring this to the forefront. Everyone needs to be able to see Sons of Toledo moving forward so that they can see the authentic story. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sitting here with Mike Perdue, winner of our Mosaic Multicultural Talent and Advertising Content Creation Award for the LFTF show. Congratulations, Mike, well, on your you. win. Thank you, I appreciate it. Here is it. your award. Thank you very much. And tell us about the LFTF show. Well, uh, the LFTF show stands for Lead from the Front. Um, and I actually came up with the show after doing a clothing brand called Three Kings Clothing with my two partners, shout out to Archie and uh, Joey. But um, I started that business and I was just meeting all these people who were having the same business struggles that I was having. Like, you know, as an entrepreneur, you go through all of these things. So I wanted to spotlight those things. I wanted to say, let's spotlight these entrepreneurs that are getting over the hump. Cause one, it'll spotlight their business. And two, it's gonna show people in the community, like we can do this. You know, you just have these these issues, but you, you'll get over them if you stick with it. So it's more than just the show. It's like, you know, showing people that, that you can do all of these things by putting people out there in front of you that have had those issues where you might have stopped, but they kept going and kept pushing on with their brand. Um, and it's important for us to see that, like every, every person to see that, you know, because a lot of times we don't get to see, you know, people of color or just diverse people doing those things. So I just want to make sure that I, I spotlighted that. Thing. Absolutely. Thank you for being with us. Congratulations again, well-deserved. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. We're here with Christina Casper from Urban Sight Inc. And they are the winners of our Mosaic Alternative Media Form Award. Welcome, Christina, congratulations. Thank you, Val, deeply honored. Now, tell us about the Glass City River Wall Project. The Glass City River Wall started as a beautification project. It's the largest mural in the country by 100,000 square feet, but it turned into um, something to really reach the community on a lot of different levels. So we have an educational component um, that just really creates a runway for conversation and, and the ability for us to listen to each other. Now, this is a massive project. What all went into creating this <laughs> massive thing? You know, a lot of collaboration, a lot of discussion, a lot of, you know, sometimes sitting in our own discomfort. So tell us about the team, the crew, who is Gabe Gold, the artist? Right, let's start with Gabe. Um, Gabe is an artist who comes to us from Los Angeles, the Los Angeles area. He's a young, um, really talented artist with an incredible vision um, and, and really has um, almost a magical quality to be able to capture the communities that he works in. Oh my God, thank you so much for this award. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you to the American Advertisement Federation for giving us this opportunity. And uh, we had an amazing team. Thank you to the teammates. Um, we had like six artists, uh, 30 plus people. Uh, it's been an amazing journey. It's been a life-changing journey. Um, and thank you to Urban Side as well for you know working with us on this thing. But yeah, thanks everybody. The crew is a diverse representation of Toledo, mostly Toledo and Detroit. So we wanted to make sure that we included the local arts community. And they, again, are just, you know, all have careers in their own right, but have represented Toledo on a level that, you know, I say it all the time, it's pretty magical. Now, this mural is featuring indigenous people and bringing all these different cultures and stories together. Mm -hmm. What do you think the impact is or should be from this mural on the community? The idea that we were representing our past, present, and our future wound up speaking on a lot of different levels. So we're representing our past as the indigenous peoples who were the first people to recognize the economic impact of the Maumee River and this land. To be able to have a platform to help us to understand what that really means and who we want to be moving forward to sit and listen in these moments as opposed to tell has been um, probably the deepest impact on me personally as well as our team and ultimately I think the community. To receive this award from this group for me is coming full circle and what validation from such an impactful group to give us this award is really humbling. So thank you. Of course, we're honored. 
Congratulations again to all of our winners. And for more information about the Mosaic Initiative, please visit our website at aaftoledo.org forward slash mosaic. It's my honor to present yet another Gold Addy Award. This Gold Addy Award goes to Jacob Parr and Chris Hatfield for the art direction of the Reverend Guitars website created for Reverend Guitars. A Silver Addy Award goes to Madhouse for the Give Rise campaign video created for Susquehanna University. A Silver Addy Award goes to Melissa Werman Designs for the Terra Tempe menu created for Terra Tempe Kitchen. Your Media People receives a Silver Addy Award for When Life Gives You Rice, created for Rice Life Toledo. I got my own spatulas and stuff, so I started practicing egg tricks with a golf ball in the back. They don't train preps to become hibachi chefs in Nagoya. A Silver Addy Award goes to Madhouse for the Envelope Mart sales video created for Envelope Mart. Envelope Mart was born out of the idea that we could find a better way to provide quality products and programs for our customers. Our tailored solutions integrate into our clients' envelope needs with a high level of technical sophistication. A Silver Addy Award goes to Madhouse for the No Barriers video created for No Barriers. Maybe it's something invisible, hidden, but so real. I'm proud to present a Gold Addy Award to Heart for the OHLQ Making Spirits Bright campaign created for the Ohio Liquor Jobs Ohio Beverage System. It's an honor to be presenting the final Judge's Choice Award for the night. This Judge's Choice Award goes to Blink Marketing Logistics for the Blink Pain Point Mail campaign. Let's hear from the judge. Hello, AAF Toledo. My name is John Tapascio, and I am a Seattle-based copy supervisor working for Evoke in San Francisco. Um, first off, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me to be one of your judges for this year's Addy Awards. This was my 10th or 11th show uh, that I've judged at the local level, and I'll actually be judging uh, the national show uh, later this year. What I chose for my judge's choice is the Blink Pain Point campaign. So this was one of the earlier pieces I saw in the uh, judging process, and uh, the core piece of the submission uh, really drew my attention because of the story and the uh, art direction. However, what elevated it for me was the image the additional components uh, to the submission. So uh, you know, I gave the initial piece uh, a pretty strong score. However, that score slowly rose with each additional piece in the campaign because those other pieces just seemed to, to plus and reinterpret the original idea uh, in ways that I felt like were very unexpected, uh, which for me, that is one of the hallmarks of what makes a good campaign great. It's like there's a bear in my belly. An angry bear that just woke up from a nap and I'm just stomping and growling. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Hart for the ProMedica eBid Children's Campaign created for ProMedica Russell J. eBid Children's Hospital. The Toledo Walleye are awarded a Bronze Addy for Back at Full Strength created for the Toledo Walleye. Right there, 
on the verge of championship. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Madav Group for the 2021 Madav Music Fest created for Madav Group. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Your Media People for partners created for Your Media People. To work with a small number of very talented artists. When I think about where we've been and I look where we're going, I have nothing but excitement for the future. A Bronze Addy Award goes to Your Media People for Creativity is Contagious, created for AAF Toledo. Creativity is thinking and concepting and shaping your ideas. It's being innovative, coming at things with an original perspective. It has to come from within, so you have to use your own imagination, your own thoughts, your own ideas. Melissa Werman Designs wins a bronze Addy for the Golden Owl Tavern brand identity, created for Golden Owl Tavern. A bronze Addy award goes to Hart for the Lure logo, created for Lure. Without any further ado, it's my pleasure to present another Gold Addy Award. This Gold Addy Award goes to Hart for the Lure branding created for Lure. Students are the future, and there are some phenomenal pieces created by our young people at our local colleges and universities. I'm pleased to announce that a Student Gold Award goes to Jesse Walton from BGSU for the Revelation booth installment. A Silver Student Award goes to Sophia Lamas from BGSU for bold BGSU GD Portfolio Review Day. Bridget Holzapple, Lauren Perry, and Harmony Ross from the BGSU Art D 4060 class receive a Silver Student Award for their BGSU GD graduation gift. A Silver Student Award goes to Madison Schuster from Owens Community College for the War of the Worlds poster. A Student Bronze Award goes to Ramona Wolf from Owens Community College for the 14th Annual Creative Noises Live poster. Abigail Newbert from Owens Community College is awarded a Bronze Student Award for the Mock Owens Women's Sports Promotion. A Student Bronze Award goes to Noah Ackerman from Owens Community College for the Barefoot Show brand campaign. A Student Bronze Award goes to Hannah Markin from Owens Community College for the Boxer Boots Shoe Brand Campaign. A Student Bronze Award goes to Aliana Menchaca from Owens Community College for the 14th Annual Creative Noises Live poster. Julia Russo from Owens Community College is awarded a Student Bronze for the 16th Annual Melodic Expressions poster. Okay, this is it. It all has led to this moment, the best of show. Here's what our judges had to say about this year's winner. For best of show, my fellow judges and I selected the Reverend Guitars website. I have to say, out of all of the shows that I've judged, this is one of the best pieces that I've seen, period. Uh, first off, the art direction was absolutely gorgeous. The, you know, the site was nice and clean. Uh, but there was also a certain attitude to the look and feel that was very refreshing. Uh, to the, from the UX standpoint, the site was very easy to navigate and, and get, get around um, and find things. Um, third, uh, but most important for me, was the writing. You know, as a writer by trade, the storytelling was some of the best storytelling I've seen in a website in a long time. And, I applaud the creative team for, for crafting uh, a message that kind of went beyond just the science of what makes a good website good, but also infusing a certain tone and attitude into the words that Google isn't necessarily looking for. Just wanted to say one last thank you for inviting myself and my fellow judges to judge your uh, Eddie Awards this year. It was an absolute pleasure and I uh, had a blast looking at some great work. Uh, 
you guys should be very proud of the things coming out of uh, your market. And you know, honestly, uh, from top to bottom, I have to say this is one of the best shows that I've judged. And I just want to say, keep up the great work, guys. You should be very proud and have a great night. Bye. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Brenda Cortez. I am a producer at The Distillery Project here in Chicago, Illinois. I have been a part of The Distillery Project for a little over three years now. Um, I'm here to uh, just give a little snippet of what was the best in show for uh, the judges and I um, on the panel for this year. And um, the one that rose to the top out of so many different categories it definitely hit on a few for us which made it really stand out for this year's awards and so it would have to go to the reverend um the reverend guitar website um from visuals to the copywriting to the user experience um i gotta say like it really it really touched on so many levels to gain the opportunity for uh, like for for the website to be the best in show um we thought that it was i would like to say like collectively um although i know everyone's else everyone's submitting their own individual videos um collectively we really uh enjoyed the copywriting that was um on the website beautifully done um the visuals the different colors how the colors were used uh, from the guitars i think that was very cool um um, for me personally, the user experience was amazing, even just doing it on a phone, as easy as like on a phone from a website. All of it was wonderfully executed, so congratulations. <laughs>